What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another deck profile here on TCG University for the card game Universes. My name's Tam, and today I'm going to be showing you my Shiva deck from uh, this week's Campus Championship. Shiva is a, a, a very fun character, a character that I am the character from the DLC that I was most excited to, to try. And I'm glad I got to try her out on the symbol that I thought she was going to be uh, her best, which is the water symbol. If you haven't seen one of my deck profiles before, basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be telling you more about how the deck wants to work, how the deck wants to operate, and the reason I picked the cards inside of it, as opposed to just reading off the card text, because that's lame. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the profile. All right, so we have Shiva. What does Shiva do? Well, Shiva's really, really mean. Being a uh, four hand size character with 40 vitality means that uh, she kind of is limited on the options that she has. And the way that she makes up for that is pretty much all of her attacks um, are very, very hard to deal with. At the beginning of her combat phase, she takes the top three cards of your opponent's deck and puts them in their card pool so that Either all of her attacks have a pseudo plus three speed, or then she can use her abilities in order to discard a card and keep one of the, those cards there, whether that's on uh, my turn or on your turn. Or I can discard one, uh, discard one of those cards from the card pool and either draw a card, increasing my hand size for the turn, or giving plus four damage. I mean that the when I do have a card in your card pool, it's just gonna I'm gonna smack you that much harder. So um, the main goal of this Shiva deck is to find. Air Ground Smash. This card is fantastic, and it was made to help water characters with low hand size draw X. X equals 8 minus their hand size. Previously, we have not had a 4 hand size water character before Shiva. We've only had 5 hand size, so you could only draw 3 cards. But because of how Air Ground Smash works, um, you're actually going to draw 4 cards off of it, turning you, you into uh, an 8 hander. Very, very, very cool. I, uh, I, I, I like this, uh, this card a lot. And as Shiva, I get to just have a ton of value off of a, uh, a six high for six, um, probably a nine high for six because of the three cards in their card pool, draw eight, and then using Shiva to draw an additional one by kicking one of the cards. So an eight high for, uh, an eight high for, er, for six is, a uh, it's pretty good. And so if I see air ground smash, um, twice inside of the match the uh the game is probably over just based on the value that i get off of it and so what's one great way to see air ground smash by playing the same one over again getaway fire has a combo that says um if you play it after you've played a tech card you can lift that tech card and then remove this card from the game after it resolves so it's gone and then i take the card that i lifted and i just play it in my card pool again and so this if I find these two cards, um, I get to draw, what, uh, eight additional cards on this turn, which seems pretty rad. Uh, so we were playing double getaway fire in order just to loop our air ground smash at least once. Up next, another way to find our uh, our air ground smash is to play Rose Whiplash. Um, this just says enhance opponent's turn, add a reversal from my discard pile to my hand. Uh, this card has the keyword deadlock reversal, um, but it is considered a reversal still. And so I will be able to lift it up with the ability of uh, Rose Whiplash. Just lift it out of my discard pile and then on my next turn, since I've got it, we can pop it down. Not to mention if I do happen to block and uh, play this Rose Whiplash as an actual card and I can get the combo off, plus four Speed, speed and plus four damage is very good on a base five low for five. Not to mention she was giving it, giving it an extra four damage. Uh, this thing can be absolutely game ending. She was one big downside is that she is a four hand size character, and sometimes that means that we have a, a bit of a slow start. And so either I can increase my hand size or I can make my opponent skip a turn. And Ice Dragon Siryu is the perfect tool to do that. It says it has stun three, so I commit three of my opponent's uh, foundations, and then freeze all foundations committed due to this card's stun ability. This just says that those those foundations do not get to re-ready at the beginning of their turn. And so, yeah, I do have a bit of a slow build because I have a, I'm a base four hands as character. But as soon as I find an Ice Dragon, I basically say that you skip a turn. And if I have any way to recur this, which we do have some in the deck, or I draw a second one, um, I'm going to tr be trying to skip uh, your turns perpetually. I will say, Ice Dragon Siryu is only really good whenever you uh, are early in the game. As soon as your opponent has seven or more foundations, freezing three of them actually is not that terrifying. Um, it is it is all on the early game plays of, I, I want to see this card early and then uh, stun them out. To that point, you might be able to kick it up to a four of, but because it is a two check and so is Rose Whiplash and so is um, Getaway Fire, I was a little trepidatious about adding in that extra one because checking a two is a really easy way to uh, to lose the game. 
Up next, we've got a, uh, some more card pool stuffing tools. We're playing for Scratch Glissando. Uh, and the way that Scratch works is uh, I take one of my opponent's momentum and then add it into their card pool face down. So this card is either a four low for eight because I pitched the card that I used, or um, it is a four low for four that lets me draw an additional card um, because I've added one of their cards in. Really, really solid on my opponent's turn. It's also really, really good on my turn. Um, it is totally... It feels really, really good to take and have Scratch as one of my opening plays and put a fourth card into the card pool because of how Shiva's response works. And then either using those cards in the card pool or, heck, I can just leave them there. Turns this into an eight low for four. Nobody's blocking that on turn two. Up next, our, uh, one of our big kill conditions, if we don't get the Airground Smash off, is Furious Stomp. It's a 4 high for a million because it gets plus 2 damage for every card in my opponent's card pool. Using the Scratch Play, using Shiva's Response, it's very easy to get these uh, the cards up to some pretty monumental numbers. Having 4, having 5 cards in my opponent's card pool means that not only can they not block because the progressive is too high, but I'm also doing a ton of damage. And then the last attack that we have in the deck is a three precise blow. Uh, this card is in here primarily just to block, respond, have them stuff a card, and then use Shiva to discard a card and leave that card in the card pool. It also seals some pretty key cards, making sure that my opponent uh, can't do the cool thing that they want to do. It also is a reversal in, and a weapon to combo with both Rose Whiplash and with Scratch if I so choose. Uh, cards are just an all-around fantastic tool in pretty much any deck that can play it. On our actions, we are playing Triple Yin and Yang. This card is also uh, multifaceted when it comes to its uses. I can take and block with it and pick up a really awesome combo card. So either Precise Blow or um, if I need to block more, I can pick up Gateway Fire if I already have an Air Ground Smash. Or I can pick up Rose Whiplash, Respond, Play the Reversal, and then pick up the... Uh, the uh, air ground smash in order to play it on my next turn really really solid stuff or if I do happen to have whatever cool piece that I, I want I could play my cool combo attack respond with yin and yang and stuff them two more if this is on my turn they've already stuffed three cards with Shiva here's another two they've got five cards in their uh, their card pool they're not going to be interacting with my attacks whatsoever on to our assets, we're playing one Cal Yuga. This card is in here exclusively because if you debuild a forehand size character, you lose the game, uh, or they just lose. And so if my opponent decides to debuild me, I'm also going to debuild them. Uh, a bit of an eye for an eye tactic, just because it's so important to make sure that I keep my foundations up and ready so that I can use them um, either defensively or offensively. And the last asset we're playing is we're playing Double Fiddlesticks. Uh, this card just says destroy a ready foundation, draw a card, and I can stack a momentum from the top from my stack a momentum to the top of my deck. So if I hit you with one air ground smash, I'm gonna stack it with fiddlesticks and then draw back up with fiddlesticks and or draw it up with Shiva. And uh, hey, I'm gonna hit you with that air ground smash again. It does let us recur the cool cards that we have inside of our deck. Or, uh, another cool play is we can also do it with Ice Dragon. Um, if on turn one I can find the fiddlesticks on my opponent's turn, I. I stack the Ice Dragon, draw the Ice Dragon. Well, then on my next turn, I'm also going to freeze and commit all of their foundations again. Um, what's better than skip one turn? Skip two turns. On to our foundations. We'll talk about our uh, aggressive foundations first. The first foundation I got to talk about is a four champion of combat. Uh, this card is a banana sandwich inside of Shiva. It is instantly live where it just says enhance your attack gets plus three plus three because it gets plus one damage for each card in their card pool. Not to mention if I have any other ways to stuff cards in their card pool with like precise blow or a scratch or yin and yang. Um, they just they just scale or my opponent blocking. Uh, they just scale so unbelievably hard. This card is like the main way to uh, to push uh, any sort of damage through. Up next, we've got three uh, greatest combatant. Uh, this is really good on offense, and it's okay on defense, but you have to make sure that you can either precise blow or find the scratch reversal in order to make the defense play happen. But even just giving an extra plus one plus two is uh, just good enough to like squeak uh, the rest of that damage through. It might just be important enough. Up next, we're playing a one of uh, Novice's Progress. Uh, I wanted to just try this card. Response check of four after a card leaves my opponent's card pool, which it does with Shiva's uh, bottom enhance. Uh, my attack gets plus one or minus one damage. And so 
Nine times out of ten, or actually, if this just says my attack, I can discard it. So this just says check a four for an additional damage. It probably should have been a greatest combatant, but I wanted to show that it existed. It also has another tool of discard momentum ready this foundation. My next check gets plus one, which is important inside of a four-hand size character. Maybe this is one of the only foundations that I have built, and so getting the most value out of it that I can is, is good. Onto our flow cards, we're uh, we're playing one a son's love first form commit draw card. Uh, very good to turn my four hand size character into a five hand size character. And if they decide to get a momentum off this ability, I get to draw an additional one. So being a six hand size character, draw two off the son's love, draw four off of Shiva is very good whenever I have a starting health of forty. But conflicting with that flow card, we also have fatal disagreement, which says first form commit. My opponent adds the top card of their deck to their card pool face down. So these two cards are contradictory because I cannot play both. First forms. First form means it has to be the first thing that you attempt to do in the turn. Um, but this has the added benefit of after a card leaves their card pool, they add another card back. So uh, this card is not just uh, add a card into their card pool for plus one speed. But if I do decide to discard that card off of Shiva, I can make them put it back. So four cards in their card pool, and then I can flip and keep them at four cards in their card pool. On to defense. We are playing four toughest punk in junior high. Uh, before I take damage from the attack, I can flip and then put uh, reduce the damage by three. Really solid ability. Stretch out that forty vitality the best that I can, especially whenever the uh, I, I have very selective blocks. I get like maybe one or two blocks if I'm lucky in a turn, and so having some onboard defensive pressure is good. It's very very good. Speaking of onboard defensive pressure, we can also talk about the stuff that's in my discard pile. Uh, we're playing four future poolside date. Uh, this card has two abilities. One, discard a card, minus four speed because of how low my hand size is. As well as if it's on top of my discard pile, I can enhance and then gain uh, two vitality. If it stays on top of my discard pile during the next enhance step, I can gain another two. And so this card just stretches out my uh, my life as Shiva in order to to let me keep continuing to play the game. So it's, uh, it's like a reusable toughest punk in junior high, but at the enhanced speed. Up next, defense wise, we've got double his gift of immortal blood. This says discard one of my momentum. If they have a momentum, minus five speed. Uh, hey, I'm going to discard this momentum and auto block whatever I need to. This precise blow, it's going to happen. Um, this yin and yang, I'm going to find what I want. Uh, very, very important card. Uh, I think this card should be played, but pretty much a two of anything that can uh, that can guarantee some momentum. Also an easy block, we've got three energy charge, but this card also has a bit of a, uh, a second roll. We are playing a ton of combos in here, and response check of four after I play a combo, get plus one, plus one, is not bad. And so it does not feel bad to build these down into my staging area and not just be forced to block with them because of how amazing the static on this card is. If you've not picked up the uh, Street Fighter DLC, make sure you go do so. On to some disruption, we're playing four Royal Bodyguard. This is the main card that came out of Shiva's kit herself, um, and it's one it's one of the craziest uh, defensive tools inside of the game currently. Enhance opponent's turn uh, once per turn, discard a momentum, stuff the top card into their card pool. Uh, if I've got four of these out and four momentum, I basically say that their turn is over. Hey, your turn's over, it's my turn. And if I want to leave those cards there, I can use Shiva, discard a card, and, and stick it to where it needs to be. And not to mention, it also has the other ability of enhance flip minus one damage for each card in their card pool. So at minimum, it's going to be minus two damage. Because I can use, they've Played an attack, obviously, or else I can't use the enhance, duh. Or uh, I can discard the momentum, and then they add a card into their card pool face down, and so it could just be a playable wall committed minus two. Uh, with everything that's happening card pool-wise, um, with spirit shotguns going crazy and so on and so forth, uh, this card easily can be the thing needed to survive a half block or or uh, make sure that, that you just don't die outright to a singular card. I think this card is phenomenal and needs to be played in uh, everything that can play these symbols. Up next, we've got four a new master, or excuse me, three a new master. Uh, this card just uh, is a little bit more card pool stuffing. On your attack, I can commit and uh, if they've got two momentum, add a card, or I can destroy losing the resource in order to uh, to add a card from their momentum to their card pool face down. It's just more stuffing, trying to keep Shiva uh, as as lubed up and the the engine of the deck running as smoothly as possible um and one of the ways to to make sure they have that momentum is with three jolly gloomy uh this card it just says commit they add the top card of the deck to their momentum or i can destroy it and keep them off momentum if i'm a little afraid of uh since smacking shiva is very easy to do because of my four hand size um it's possible that i just don't find my block 
And then the last card in the deck, because we've got three Ageless and Wise. This card's in here for the same reason we're playing Cal Yuga of I can't afford to have my foundation ripped uh, ripped apart. And so being able to response flip after you play a, a thing to, to get rid of cards in my, my staging area, I'm just going to say no to you. A fourth one should definitely be in the sideboard if we have made one. And so there you have it. There is the Shiva deck that I played for this week's Campus Championship. If you liked the deck, let me know down in the comments down below. What was your favorite part? What would you suggest changing? I would love to hear. Lastly, if you want to check out all the matches, please go out to uh, a, the separate ch uh, playlist here out of the channel and support us out on Patreon. Patreon.com slash TCG University. So from all, of us, from all of us here at TCGU, thank you very much for watching and stay learned. Mm -hmm.